Hello and welcome back to our continuing webinar series on creating HDSLR video. For those of you just joining us, this webinar series is dedicated to showing photographers the ins and outs of creating movies on their HDSLR cameras. Now before we start, I want to take a quick second to thank Cinevate for sponsoring today's webinar. I would also like to give a quick shout out to PhotoCare in New York City for providing us the rental equipment for our on-location shooting. And lastly, I'd like to thank Triple Scoop Music for providing us with the soundtrack for today's webinar. Now last time, we talked about basic camera movement and discussed how moving the camera can add a little bit of impact to a film. Now if you happen to miss that webinar, feel free to check out our archive at Cinevate.com. Now today, we will be discussing sound and what tips and tricks you'll need to know as you delve into the world of audio. We will talk about everything from simple solutions like on-camera microphones to more professional ones like shotgun mics and lavaliers. We'll also briefly cover recording audio to an external device and the concepts of recording double system sound. And lastly, we'll take you around to several different locations around New York City to help you understand what tools to pick regardless of the situation. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. The most important thing about audio is that you never notice when audio is good, but you definitely notice when it's bad. There's nothing more disappointing than recording hours of footage only to have it paired with bad audio. So how do we get past that? How do we get beyond getting horrible audio when it comes to an HDSLR camera? Well, we take a look at our HDSLRs. The one thing that this camera has that's kind of a, a, a hobbling point or an, an obstacle is the fact that it's got a multi-directional microphone embedded inside of it. Now when I say multi-directional, I mean omni. It's going to be pulling audio from different directions all over the place. So the one thing we want to do is make sure we can bypass that. So that's why we have something like this. It's a unidirectional microphone made by a company called Rode. Um, there's a million out there, I just happen to use the Rode one. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to attach the microphone to the camera and then go ahead and just plug it in. By doing that, we're actually able to bypass the multi-directional microphone of the camera and get an opportunity to record directionally in one direction wherever the microphone is going or pointing. Okay, So that's just a simple way of improving your audio when it comes to an HDSLR. So what we're going to do now is actually show you some different examples of recording audio um, without a microphone like a Rode VideoMic Pro and then with a microphone like a v Rode VideoMic Pro. So in this case, right now as I'm talking, you should notice a distinct difference in the quality of the audio. And that's really because we've just actually taken the Mic Pro and unplugged it from the camera. Now what we're going to do is give a second, we're going to plug the microphone back into the camera and then get an opportunity for you to listen to tell the difference between what you just heard and what you're hearing now. When we didn't have a microphone plugged into the camera, the camera was actually pulling sound from a million different directions. And that can sometimes not give us the best audio. By using a video mic pro or a microphone like it, we're able to focus where the sound is coming from because it's unidirectional. Now these mics are great if you're doing like events or if you're a one-man band or if you're doing something like run and gun where you want to keep the profile of the camera as small as possible. Now there are some times where a, a video mic pro or a, a mic like that won't be the best solution. So let's go ahead and move to another location and show you guys what other pieces of equipment are there for us to use when a microphone or the on-camera mic just isn't good enough for us. So in addition to using an on-camera microphone like a Rode VideoMic Pro to increase the quality of your sound, you can take your sound quality to the next level by using something called a shotgun mic. Now a shotgun mic is a high quality, super sensitive microphone that will allow you to get even better sound if you can place it close to your sound source. Now in a situation like this, where I'm sitting in, a, in an enclosed room, a shotgun microphone is a perfect tool to use because it will, while it's still directional, it's still able to capture some of the ambient noise. Now obviously you can probably tell from where I am and by the sound that I'm in the New York subway system. That's why it's such a great microphone to pick. Now here we are in Grand Central Terminal. And this next location is really important because it helps us illustrate picking the right tool for the right job. Now we've talked about on-camera microphones, 
and shotgun microphones. But in a situation like this, where you really can't get close enough to capture the audio from your subject, miking them wirelessly is the perfect opportunity. So here I am, standing in the middle of Grand Central Terminal, able to talk directly to the camera, because I'm being miked wirelessly via lavaliers. In addition to using microphones to increase the level of our audio, we can also use other accessories to increase the level of which it's recorded. For example, in my hand I have a Zoom H4n portable recorder. This is a very versatile tool to have in my arsenal because it can be used in a variety of different situations. For example, if I were at a wedding and I wanted to record the DJ audio or the reception speeches or something like that, I could give this recorder to the DJ and record those speeches to this recorder. That will allow me to use the audio later when I actually edit. In this situation, I'm actually on location. When you're on location, have an accessory like this windscreen. When you have an accessory like this windscreen, it allows you to prevent wind noise from hitting you and affecting the quality of the audio. What I'm going to do here is take the windscreen off, and you should be able to hear a significant difference in the quality and level of the audio. Well, now that you've had a chance to uh, get an introduction to the Zoom H4n portable recorder, we're going to go ahead and, move and talk about something called double system sound. Double system sound simply means that we're recording our audio to a second device. Now the reason we use double system sound is because it gives us a higher quality of audio. It also allows us to use multiple sound sources and it allows the person who's recording the sound to stand further away from the camera. Now today we're actually using a set of lavaliers and a shotgun mic with what we call a dead cat to prevent any kind of wind noise. Now I know what you're thinking. Brian's recording all this audio to a second sound source. How are you able to sync all that up in post? Well, if you have a tool like this called a clapper, before you start anything, you, when you start your recording, right before you start your take, you do this. And that allows you, in the editing room, to sync your audio up with your video file. And the software titles today, like Final Cut Pro X and Adobe Premiere Pro, they have these tools kind of embedded in their software that allow that syncing a little more easy. Okay, so now that we've talked about double system sound, let's go ahead and look at some other tools that are available to us that we might want to have in our sound kits. So now that we've taken a second to look at the different environments in which we record sound and which tools are involved, we thought it would be really valuable to you if we took a step back and took a look at closer at the tools involved in recording sound. Now, if you remember, when we started off today's webinar, we talked about how to bypass the camera audio. And we talked about using a microphone like this because it was directional. Now, in regards to this microphone, the VideoMic Pro, the reason I like it is because it offers me an ability just to mount straight onto my camera, and I don't need any specific tools or little gadgets to make it work. Um, it operates off a 9-volt battery, and it's just a great, quick, and easy solution that gives me directional sound when all I really need is just something better than my in-camera audio. Now, the next piece of equipment that we talked about today was a shotgun mic and how it provides us higher quality audio while being directional. Now, the major difference between a shotgun mic and a mic that we place on top of our camera is the fact that it's professional. And when I, may, when I say professional, I'm actually referring to the XLR inputs that are used to interface with the microphone. Now, these XLR inputs will allow us to use a number of other devices as we evolve as sound technicians. So it's great to have in our arsenal because it's something we're always going to be able to use. Now, a couple points about these shotgun mics. Now, the first thing is you're either going to get a battery-powered or a phantom-powered microphone. Now, it's not a question of whether one's better than the other. It's a question of what suits your work now. And there are a lot of sound technicians that have a variety of different microphones, and they just pick the right microphone for the right job. Um, another thing that we're going to want to pay attention to is something called a shock mount. Now, this is probably one of the most important things when using a shotgun microphone, because a shock mount will allow us to mount the microphone, it'll absorb vibrations, and also give us an opportunity to mount it onto a pistol grip, or even if it's got a hot shoe mount, place it on top of a camera if we're in a pinch and we need something on top of the camera. Outside of using shotgun mics to record audio, we also introduced you to the idea of using lavaliers or wireless mics to record sound when your subject is 
further away from the camera than you would ever expect. Now, I don't want you to panic when I say wireless because the concept's pretty simple. For example, you have two lavs. One, you're going to put with the person you're recording. The other, you're going to leave with the person recording the sound. Really, from there, it's just magic because it will always record what it's supposed to. Now, the great thing about lavaliers is they're battery powered and they offer a wide variety of different inputs and cabling so that you can interface with different recorders and different microphones for different situations. They're just a great base tool to have that you can fit to a specific need when you come upon a certain situation. After we introduced you to the variety of microphones that we use to record sound, we took a brief second to talk about an external recorder and the quality of sound that it can offer you when you record sound. Now, we talked about this Zoom H4n. Um, what we didn't say was that it often helps to have a nice little handy pouch to stick it in so you can keep it on your belt clip. You know, a lot of times you're a one-man band, or if you're kind of just running around, running a gun in on your own, you really want to have um, the recorder in a pouch like this because it'll just make your life a lot easier. Now, a little bit about the recorder itself. Now, the recorder, you know, it has these XLR inputs. It also has a spot for an SD card, so you can record all your files digitally. Also, it has a quarter 20 slot on the back, so if I need to mount the, uh, the recorder to a camera rig or mount it somewhere, I can do so pretty easily. The last thing is, it also comes with a set of its own microphones. So if I wanted to place it somewhere off in the distance and just have it record audio on its own, I can do that. Now, Outside of using an H4n to record audio, you know, you're going to need a way to, to monitor it and to actually listen to what you're recording. That's where these headphones come in. And these headphones are really, really important because um, they allow you to really monitor and listen to what's actually going on. A couple of notes about headphones though. The first thing you're going to want to do is not use like um, little earbud headphones or something like that. You want to use something that's going to cover your ear. Another tip is to pick a set of headphones that are professional quality and flat sounding. Now when I say flat, what I really mean is something that um, isn't, doesn't have a lot of bass in it. So you want to stay away from those like, you know, Bose deep bass headphones or your, you know, your Dr. Dre beat big bass headphones. Because if you um, balance your audio like that, you're not going to be really happy with the way it sounds. And finally, the last thing we talked about in regards to the H4n was using something like this to prevent wind noise. You know, we uh, hopefully illustrated it well enough for you in today's webinar, but having a little simple tool like this can really save you in the end when it comes to recording audio outside. You know, weather's unpredictable, wind is unpredictable, so when we have a tool like this available for us to use, it saves us and provides so much safety when we're recording audio when it matters. After we talked about the various different microphones that we could use to record audio and the recording device that we record the audio to, we introduced you to this idea of double system sound. Now, if you remember, double system sound is simply recording audio to a device that isn't your camera. Now, the reason we do that is because it gives us a higher quality of audio, it allows us to use multiple sound sources, and it lets the person who's recording the audio stand further away from the camera. We also took a second to introduce you to this guy. Now call it what you want, a slate or a clapper. This is an amazing tool to have when you're recording audio because it gives you a practical way of syncing your audio with your video. This simple sound in post-production can save you hours of work. Now this particular model is basically a whiteboard. So if you use a marker like this, you can actually write down what you want and erase it later when you want to change your scene or change your take. Now we're going to talk about a variety of other tools that you might want to think about having as you start to record sound. The first thing you don't want to do is get gaff tape. Now gaff tape is really important because it will allow us to tape down cables, it'll allow us to tape cables to uh, boom poles, and really save ourselves a lot of money because if a cable gets caught on something and breaks, over the course of a lifetime it could really save us hundreds of dollars. Now, there's a little funny saying about gaff tape. Um, it's like the force. There's a light side and a dark side, and it keeps the world together. So just make sure you keep a roll of gaff tape with you. With all the pieces of equipment that we've introduced you to, the next natural question is, how do I mount it all? 
I've got lavs I'm carrying, I've got shotgun mics that I've got to mount, and I've got headphones and recorders. I mean, it's a lot of stuff. So how do you actually use it appropriately when you're on location? In order to do that, we have something like this from Cinovate called the Simplest Quick Release Plate. Now this is a great and unique tool because it has 10 quarter 20 sockets all the way around the perimeter of the plate. It also allows me to quick release my camera off the plate, which in a certain situation allows me to change out lenses and batteries more easily while keeping all of my accessories mounted to the plate, which is probably on my tripod or on my monopod or something. The important thing to remember about this plate is that because it's got 10 quarter 20 sockets in it, I can use an accessory mount like this to mount pretty much anything right off of it. Okay. Now, in addition to the simplest quick release plate um, and, and the accessory mount, a couple other things that I use are these. Now, this is, if you notice, would be just a normal hand grip for a camera rig. What we've done here is we've taken a quarter 20 to 3 8 adapter and screwed it right into the top of that hand grip. When I do that, I'm able to actually screw in this hand grip into the bottom of my shock mount. And I know what you're thinking, what good is that going to do me? Well, in the world of sound, we call this a pistol grip. And a pistol grip will let me take a shotgun mic, mount it to my shock mount, and hold it to capture sound. It's a great way of holding the microphone without grabbing the actual microphone itself which will help you eliminate vibrations and allow you to more comfortably hold the microphone for a longer period of time. So that's just a couple of pieces that I like to use from Cinevate that help me capture sound a little bit more effectively every time. As you develop into a seasoned sound technician, you will eventually need to record audio outside. So let's talk about some of the things that you're going to need. First thing, these typically come with microphones and they're a great stopgap solution. They're called wind socks, and they allow you to kind of encase the microphone and isolate it partially from the wind. However, for a more professional solution, we actually like to use something called a blimp. Now, a blimp provides complete isolation from its surrounding environment. It breaks up the wind when you actually play something called a dead cat on it. Now, we showed you kind of what the result of putting a windscreen on top of a microphone would do earlier today. Now imagine if you completely isolated the microphone and had a dead cat on it, you'd actually get an opportunity to have some high quality audio recorded. Now as you continue to record audio outdoors, you're eventually going to need one of these guys. Now they come in varying lengths and different sizes, and some of them have XLR cables embedded and some don't, but their primary purpose is the same. You can actually mount your microphone to this end, you extend your pole, and then you're actually able to extend the pole outward closer to your subject to record the audio. Now and sometimes when you're in a studio, for example, like I am today, you can use something called a boom cradle. Now a boom cradle is really neat because it can mount onto a grip head or into a grip head on top of a C-stand and free you from having a person hold a boom pole for the entirety of the recording. It's a great little tool and it's really, really nice to have when you need to do a lot of different takes inside of a studio.